Welcome on in everybody, my name is Matt. So recently I've been getting the itch to go back and watch some of Jordan Peele's movies and also listen to some interviews on how the characters and storylines and ideas were created and just how they came about. And also some behind the scenes videos on how the movies just in general were created. And really has just got me thinking about all the work that he's done in the movies and just the interesting ideas and everything going on. And specifically, I wanna talk about today why I think even after seven years, Get Out is still a masterpiece to me and is so good in so many different ways. I'm gonna talk about so many different things, like why I think the budget being small was actually a huge feather in this movie's cap and why it helped to make this movie so effective in so many different ways. I think a bigger budget would have probably maybe hurt this video or this movie in some ways. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more and just so many other things with the themes and storylines and ideas behind this movie and how unique it is and how just how good it is in so many different ways. So obviously saying this movie is good or great or solid is not exactly going out on a limb. This movie was very well, you know, Get Out was very well received when it came out. A lot of people really, really enjoyed it or at least thought it was good. Um, you know, it, it won Best Original Screenplay at the Oscars that year. It was also nominated for Best Picture, Best Director. Daniel Kaluuya was nominated for Best Actor. So the movie was well received. A lot of people really enjoyed this movie, of course, right? But I think it is aged so, 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 so well. So the original kind of ideas and kind of the history behind creating Get Out was something that Jordan Peele had been working on for close to a decade in so many different ways. It was something he would go to kind of after work or at night instead of watching TV because he would just he just enjoyed this idea behind the story and enjoyed writing this movie and creating this outline for this movie in so many different ways. He wanted to make something. He has always said this, and this is something that has really stuck with me for a very, very long time. Jordan Peele's kind of thought process when making Get Out was, I want to make my favorite movie that hasn't came out yet. And there was also some kind of pitfalls with that as well, because there's so many things in this movie that are very unique, things we haven't seen before. Hell, I mean, even just like making all of the white people in the movie essentially bad. Like that's something that, you know, we haven't really seen too much of in Hollywood and just in movies in general, which was so unique. And when I say it kind of hindered his kind of thought process in creating this is because in the back of his mind, he was kind of thinking while writing this, like, damn, nobody's ever going to buy this. Nobody's ever going to make this. Nobody's ever going to believe in this. Nobody's, why am I even doing this? Because it's so unique and has so many ideas and themes that maybe we've never seen before. And we know production companies love safe. They love, okay, is this going to sell? Is this pretty much guaranteed to sell nowadays? This isn't the 70s, 80s, or 90s where, you know, studios were taking much bigger risks and things. And also, that is also why he created a screenplay, an idea, and a story that could fit into a smaller budget. He, had, he knew he couldn't go to a studio as a first-time director and say, hey, um, you guys mind giving me 100, 200 million to uh, make my idea? Sounds great, right? A studio is not going to do that. So he knew he had to create an idea and themes and a story that was going to fit into a small budget. This movie was made for something like four and a half million dollars. And now let's talk about why that helped this movie in so many different ways. So Jordan Peele has even said he knew the budget was going to be small. So he had to focus on creating the terror and the scares and the horror that was going to be contained mainly in the acting the dialogue and just the general story in general. So, in, you know, he knew there wasn't going to be any big monsters or big CGI sequences or big massive sets all over the place, nothing like that. This wasn't going to be a major big spectacle like we see later with Nope, where he had a much larger budget. This wasn't going to be that type of a scenario. So, and that ended up being such a massive win for this particular movie because when you think back, at least for me, on some of the most effective scenes, some of the scariest scenes, some of the most sinister scenes, or some of the most enjoyable scenes, you can tell that they weren't just like, ah, oh, we'll do that in post, or ah, oh, we're gonna come up with this big giant distraction for the audience, or this big giant scare. No, they really sat down and focused on, okay, we don't have a ton of money here, so we need to create 
this particular line needs to be really, really funny. This particular look from this character needs to be really scary. This has got to sell this scene just by that particular look or the way they present that dialogue. It's got to be really, really good. And I think that was just so, so huge for this movie because a lot of times we see in Hollywood and we see in movies today that, I mean, I'm sure from a director's standpoint or you know a screenwriter's standpoint, you know, when you're working on a production, you're making a massive movie, there's long days, there's probably moments in the back of somebody's head, in the back of the director's head where they're like, oh, we'll just fix that in post. Or uh, maybe instead of rewriting this dialogue scene 10 times, we'll just do that later in post and make something or do something, come up with the scare or tell the actor, can you just act like you're scared? I know there's nothing actually behind you that's going to scare you. We'll fix that in post, but can you just act like you're kind of you're scared? And from an audience perspective, it comes across as not as realistic. And Jordan Peele has even mentioned that Get Out in a lot of different ways is essentially like a documentary, but not really. And I think that is also because the budget was so small, he wanted to create something and he was almost forced to create something that was so real and so grounded, and so relatable for so many different people. And so the small budget, obviously the movie had, you know, it made 200 plus million. So the studios were like, holy shit, this is amazing. You know, they love that. But the smaller budget was just such a huge, huge win for the production in the end, because I just think it made so many scenes so effective. And for me in particular, I really, really enjoyed that. And another thing that I want to mention is, why I like Jordan Peele's work so much. And sometimes I think like to myself, I go, why do I like a certain director's work so much? Why do I like a particular movie? Or growing up, why did I gravitate towards watching those movies over and over and over again? A lot of times it's because I gravitate towards creators and directors who don't pigeon them, kind of pigeonhole themselves or put themselves into a box in a particular genre. With movies, um, a lot of times, you know, let's just mention horror specifically. Like in the horror genre, you go, oh, here's a new horror movie. It's just a horror movie, right? And that's great. And that's cool. But for me, I tend to gravitate towards projects that have a different feel to them. And what I mean by that is Jordan Peele specifically with Get Out does such a great job blending genres while at the same time staying true to what the meat and potatoes and the foundation of the project is. Get Out at its core is a horror thriller, but it also does such a great job blending other things like comedy. Obviously, Jordan Peele comes from a comedy background, so that probably affects it a little bit but does such a great job blending the thriller action-ish sequences with the horror and the thriller and, and, and the, the comedy, like I mentioned. And it's just, it's blended so well. And that's something that I gravitate towards in so many different ways. Like if I'm going to the theater and it's like, hey, we're going to go see a comedy movie or we're going to go see an action movie and it's just action, action, action. And it's done really effective and it's done really well. I can enjoy that. But I'm not going to leave with a huge imprint on me. It's not going to leave an impact on me that's going to last for years. But when there's something different added in there, there's a blend of different things added in there. Because I'm the type of person, yes, I love horror. Yes, I love that genre. But I also love other things too. I have other interests. I have lots of hobbies. So when there's a good blend in a movie, I love that. And Jordan Peele... One of the reasons I'm such a big fan of his work is because he always pushes the boundaries of the genre in so many ways. He almost doesn't like to call his movies horror movies. He does say, yes, these are horror movies, but they're a blend of so many different genres and even the score in Get Out and all of the movies in Nope, they, they, they've had a huge focus on let's not have a score that just sounds like a score that's going to be indifferent. It's, we want to create something that's so unique. It's almost like uh, 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 you know, genre bending, a uh, push, you know, almost like it doesn't fit in any sort of a specific genre. And it's just, just so great. Love that. Love that blend, you know, blending comedy and horror and everything like that and get out specifically. It's just incredible. So now let's talk about uh, Daniel Kaluuya, one of my favorite actors in Hollywood. I run to any project that he's in. Uh, 
He was in Black Mirror before Get Out. Um, I saw him in that. But, he, you know, it didn't really like he did a great job, but it was such a small kind of role. It didn't really stand out to me that much and make me kind of remember him that much. But, you know, that really popped with Get Out. And I just think Daniel Kaluuya is such a great actor and so perfect for this role in so many ways. He does such a great job in this movie with the OK, I'm like falling for this girl we're in love we got kind of this love story going on he's doing great with that and then also like he plays the guy at the house being respectful he's being clearly disrespected in so many different ways but he's also still trying to be nice and respectful and still trying to like figure out what's going on here and not overstep his boundaries while also at the same time knowing like i'm kind of like you know a fish out of water here there's you know i'm kind of uh, alone here in a lot of different ways and i need to kind of tiptoe that uh, effectively. He just does such an incredible job with that. Obviously he gives us the iconic shots and iconic scenes, like the one where he's in the chair, hypnotized with a tear coming down his face. Just so good. He, he's incredible in Nope too. I just huge fan of Daniel Kaluuya. Originally Daniel Kaluuya though, Jordan Peele was a little bit hesitant on casting him for this role. Not because he didn't think he had the talent because he comes from the UK. He's actually from the UK. He So Jordan Peele was a little, a little bit hesitant on, this is a very American movie in so many ways. It touches on very American themes in so many different ways. So he was a little bit hesitant on, would he understand? Would he really be able to put that into his character and portray that onto the screen? And Daniel Kaluuya, they got on a Zoom call essentially and just reassured him like, hey man, the way I look it that that's everywhere. That is everywhere. We experience the things that you experience. And, and I'm glad, you know, that, that, that Jordan Peele stuck with him for this role because he is, he just does an incredible job playing that character. It's so, so, so damn good. Also, Allison Williams in this movie, I think is, is really good. This was her first big role. Um, she, you know, obviously we've seen her so far in, in movies like Megan too. She does a good job in that, but she does such a great job playing that that girlfriend who transitions into a way more sinister character towards the end, like the scene where she's kind of scrolling through her next victims while eating Fruit Loops, and she just does such a good job flipping that switch later on in the movie so effectively to make it so believable for us. There's a really pivotal moment with Allison Williams' character where they're upstairs in the parents' bedroom and Daniel Kaluuya is kind of talking about like, hey, like weird stuff's happening. Like, I don't feel comfortable here. People are saying things to me and blah, 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 blah. And that is such an important scene because it could have gone this way or it could have gone that way. And this was something they had even rehearsed going in a certain direction. So I think originally her character was going to kind of say like, oh, don't worry about them. You know, they're just getting used to you. It feels, you know, this is weird for them too. It's unique, you know. Yeah, bringing the boyfriend over, you know, just give him time. And I am so glad they didn't go in that direction and instead had her character kind of flip that switch and say like, let's get out of here. Yeah, like I agree. Like this is messed up. Let's just leave. Why don't we just go? And that was such a huge moment in the movie because that at that particular time as an audience, at least for me, you were kind of sniffing something. Something didn't smell right. You were kind of on to something with the family, but also with her a little bit. But in that scene, Allison Williams just does such a great job flipping that. And you're like, okay, we can trust her again. I feel like we can trust her again. Such a, such a great, important scene for the movie. And she just does a great job with that scene. Um, also, I think what's so effective in Jordan Peele's movies in general, and also in Get Out specifically, um, is... His ability, which also comes, it comes from comedy, and I'll talk about that, but his ability to put himself in the audience's shoes and the journey that the audience is going on and then use that against us in so many different ways. Because in this movie specifically, you're on this journey with these characters and you can tell that things are just not right. But then he'll switch it on us. And kind of just flip the script on us. Like in that moment I just mentioned with Allison Williams and Daniel Kaluuya up in the bedroom. And it'll just flip it on us to make us then feel safe and we can exhale. And then use that against us later on. And it's just so, so effective because in comedy, 
you always have to do that. It's so much about timing with your jokes, and it's so much about knowing where the audience is going and then using that against them or using that for them to get a laugh. And in this case, obviously, using that against us to get a scare. And it's just so, so, so effective. Um, I also want to talk about the sunken place a little bit. I think it's such a brilliant idea. And yeah, using things that are natural to us against us in horror movies is nothing new, of course. Like the feeling, the sunken place is kind of supposed to be like that feeling of, you know, when you're like falling asleep on an airplane or falling asleep in a chair or somewhere weird or whatever. And you, you kind of feel like you're falling for a second, but then you catch yourself. What would that feel like if you never caught yourself and woke up? That's kind of what the sunken place is supposed to feel like. You know, when they swap brains in this movie, the person whose brain is being swapped out, you know, that they're using essentially, um, is supposed to still have their subconscious there, but is supposed to be trapped in this sunken place essentially forever. And it's just such a great idea and a, such a suffocating feeling and it comes across on screen that you can kind of relate to with the character. Also, I think, you know, the the teacup, using that as the idea for hypnosis is huge in this movie. In a lot of movies, they just, you know, use the watch or whatever, whatever. And you kind of, it's a little bit unbelievable. You think the character is a little stupid to fall for that or the character, you know, maybe it was on purpose. But for this specific situation, we needed to have Daniel Kaluuya's character be somebody who was somebody we knew was smart, somebody that was going to recognize things, somebody who's going to be like, nope. And the title of the video, get out, I'm getting the hell out of here. You know what I mean? So obviously, if she busts out a pocket watch, he wasn't going to fall for that. But with the cup and the spoon, it was such a great idea to use that because from the audience perspective, we couldn't use it against his character for falling for that and being hypnotized with that because we were too. We didn't notice it either until it was too late. So that was just so effective on keeping his character intelligent and somebody we knew was going to try to fight his way out of this, but also letting him kind of fall for some things because they were done in such an effective and smart way. So um, yeah, just great. I also think the the woman who plays the hypnosis, I forget her name, but she's also in 40-year-old virgin. She's the fuck your mother later lady. But she's a great actress. I love her. She's great in this role. And I just think the the, the cast in general in this movie. I already talked about Allison Williams and, and Daniel's character, but the cast in general was fantastic in this movie. So so good in in, in all their different roles and, and things. So now let's talk about the ending a little bit to kind of wrap things up here. So there's two endings to this movie that were filmed. There's an alternate ending and the, the ending that ended up in the theatrical version of the movie. So the alternate ending was just a huge gut punch and, and, and effective and enjoyable still, but also just like, it's one of those moments because obviously at the end, Allison Williams' character gets shot. She's, on, she's, she's injured, she's bleeding. Daniel Kaluuya's there and the cops show up. In the alternate ending, they are actually cops, and he ends up going to jail. And then we cut to, I think it is like six months later, and his friend, I love that guy, I don't remember his name, great actor though, hilarious in this movie, comes to visit him in jail. And Daniel Kaluuya's like at peace though. He's at peace because he helped to save, I think her name is Georgina, but the woman he hits with the car at the end, he goes back and saves her, which is something that twists kind of ties back to the, the, the earlier parts of the movie with his mom on how he wasn't able to save his mom because he didn't go for help soon enough to save her life. But for her, he did. He did go back and save her and was able to go for help soon enough to save her life. So he's in jail, but he's still at peace because of that. Like I said, still a good ending in some ways, effective ending in some ways, but not as good as the the ending we got. The ending we got was so damn good. You know, Allison Williams is shot. She's injured. She's there. Now she's flipping the switch, trying to pretend like she's the victim. She's the white girl being, you know, brutally killed, beaten. You know, this, this, some guy of color is trying to do something bad to her upper class family. And you're as an audience, you're like, holy shit, don't do this to us. Don't do this to Daniel Kaluuya's character. 
He's such a good guy. They're the bad ones. Please don't do this to us. And the TSA car shows up and it's his buddy. And he's like, you know, get in the car, man. Let's get out of here. And it's just such a great scene. We also get that great line, you know, where he's like, I'm TS motherfucking A and we handle shit. You know, I probably butchered it, but it's something like that. We also get that great line and it's just a great ending. And Jordan Peele really wanted to have a hero at the end. He thought that was really, really important for the story. And I think that was a great idea. And of course, I think most people would agree that's probably the right choice and was a great idea as well. But get out, man. Such a great movie about so many themes we don't see nowadays. And it almost feels like a throwback to a 90s movie where a studio would take a risk on an idea that doesn't traditionally seem like a safe idea that's guaranteed to make money, but they believe in the project. And it has, it's like pushing these boundaries. And I just love so much that Get Out, you know, blends the, the, the comedic aspects and the horror and the thriller and the, and the, and the, you know, it's everything. It's just, I just, I just love the, the idea behind the movie. And I love Jordan Peele's work. You know, I'm excited for his next movie. Hopefully it comes out in 2025. And, and when it does, I'll be running to the theater for sure. And uh, like I said, just a huge fan of his work. But thanks so much, everybody, for watching. Um, my uh, kind of look back after seven years of Get Out coming out and why I still think Get Out is a masterpiece and has aged still very, very well all these years later. So thanks so much for watching, everybody, and uh, for listening to a middle-aged man ramble on about a movie for all this time. So thank you. I appreciate it. Um, let me know down in the comments down below what you think about Get Out all these years later. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.